everybody. Today I'm working on a reach in freezer. Uh, as you can see, we have a call for cooling. Evaporator fan is calling for. Let's check our temperature. 38. We have 30 on the display. Not a big deal. I just put the probe in there. Let's do our general checks. Let's start with is the fan running? Yes, the fan's running. Is the coil frosted or frozen up? Uh, no, it is not. So let's carry on with our checks here. Is the condenser clean? Uh, it is clean, but it was not when I arrived here. Uh, I had to spray her down pretty good, but she's clean now. We're all good. Let's carry on with our checks. Let's go see if our condenser fan and compressor are running. So you can see pretty dusty in here, but our, compress our condensing fan is running and uh, discharge line's hot, compressor is pumping. So we need to gauge up. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is put our gauge on. So you can see we do have refrigerant in there. Let's fire up the unit and we are pulling down to four PSI. Okay, we are working with a 404A cap tube. So let's figure out what our suction pressure should be. So it's desired box temp minus our evap td so in this case what's our desired box temp i mean like it could be zero fahrenheit it could be you know minus five fahrenheit it could be minus 10 fahrenheit okay so let's let's just use zero fahrenheit now on a on a cooler it'll be a lot easier to determine you know we usually use our you know our 32 33 as our desired box temp in this case we have a couple variables but let's just go with zero fahrenheit so if we go zero Fahrenheit and we subtract our EVAP TD, which in this case is 20 Fahrenheit, that will give us minus 20 Fahrenheit. Okay, so if we go to our PT chart and we look up minus 20 Fahrenheit saturation temperature on our vapor, That would give us 16 PSI, but really we should just focus on, we're looking for minus 20 Fahrenheit saturation, but just for the sake of using the PT chart, we're looking for 16 PSI. In our case, we had four PSI. So what does that mean? That means we have low suction pressure. All right, so we have four PSI and we are looking for 16 psi here on our refrigeration cycle chart okay so that's telling us we have low suction i did not tap into the high side i probably should have uh it's kind of a cod customer so i'm trying to just move things along as quickly as possible we will tap in there once we need to so let's go over to our um refrigeration high low pressure chart so if we come here we have two options for low either low charge or restriction or low charge and non-condensables because we didn't take our high side pressure we're not sure but we're going to go for now aim for low charge or restriction all right so how we determine that is we're just going to dump some charge in okay if our pressures go to what we want we have a low charge if they don't we're restricted so let's let's pump in some gas here and we pumped in about three and a half ounces and we're at 23 uh suction and 10 saturation all right, so we ended up with um, 23 PSI, which is um, minus 10 saturation. We want minus 20, so I slightly overcharged it. I'm just moving things quickly. Um, but what this tells us is if we had a restriction, we would never get 23 PSI. So we just ruled out that we don't have a restriction in the system literally in like two minutes, okay? So now we can go focus on the leak test. The, the reason why I didn't do a leak test first is what if we have a restriction? I don't want to spend two hours looking for a leak. So this step is very important, okay? We just dump in a little bit of the charge. And also what it tells me is, hey, we put in three and a half ounces. So that means I've lost about 30% of the charge, okay? So that means I have a little leak that I'm going to be looking for, okay? So that helps me look for how big the leak is. If I put in one ounce and the charge is 16 ounces, I'm going to be looking hard for that leak, which means I have to pump the nitrogen way up. All right, so just quickly, I'm just gonna run the unit. So we're at 26 Fahrenheit. I'm gonna do a quick stress test. Literally take less than 10 minutes to do this. So what we're gonna do here is we're down to 15. We've gone down 11 degrees in eight minutes. Okay, so we've passed the stress test. Let's move on to the leak test. 
Okay, so as you saw before, we're at 23 PSI. So if we unplug the unit, that's gonna bring our suction pressure up because we are going to try to equalize the system. Okay, so that's gonna come up slowly. Now, as we know, pressure equals temperature. So if we increase the temperature, it'll increase the pressure quicker. So an easy way to do that is, let's just open the door to the freezer, okay? We gotta take off this evaporator pan cover anyways. So let's do that, and that's gonna bump our pressure way up. All right, so I started the leak test. Spoiler alert, I found it. It's right at this cap tube, um, somewhere in this connection here. So we're gonna drop down this section of cap tube and let's just see where exactly it's leaking from. And you can see an oil stain there if you look super closely. And then you can hear it there. Obviously now that I've bent it down, the leak's way bigger. And let's just throw some bubbles on there and we're gonna screenshot this picture right here. And we're gonna give that to the customer so no one's saying that we're you know, finding phantom leaks. So one thing I wanna show you, I removed the cap tube. There's only about one inch there so we're allowed to cut it. Look at the end, it braced itself shut. So early on in my career, I made this mistake and I braced the cap tube shut. So make sure when you're putting the cap tube in, now this is the old one of course, but when you put the cap tube, that you're pushing it all the way and then you're not putting too much uh, sulfos on there. Okay, so let's go ahead with our nitrogen test. Let's go leak test everything here. So far, so good. Um, and you can see here, this is a common leak point here, up in this section here with a line set. You can't see it, it's going up into the um, insulation. So you want to make sure you're testing that always. Um, my leak detector was frozen earlier, so that's why I'm rechecking this section. Okay, so now let's go check the section where we did our brazing. And let's double check that cap tube and we're good. So to, in order to change this cap tube, it goes up in that insulation, we have to drill a new hole. So that's why we made the repair the way we did instead of changing the entire cap tube. All right, we are back on. Okay, I put in as much of the charge as it will allow me to. My bottle is kind of frozen. So we're gonna need the compressor's help here to put in the end of the factory critical charge. All right, so we're at 18 Fahrenheit. Let's do another stress test, okay? And let's check our pressure, 65 ambient, and we're at 78 and minus 20. All right, so we finished with minus 20 saturation. And then with our head pressure, we finished with 78 Fahrenheit saturation. So let's go convert that. So 78 saturation would give us on liquid 170 PSI. But like I've been talking about, we really want to focus on saturation temperatures, but I know people are fixated on these pressures because that's what we're taught when we go to school. So that equals 170 PSI. Okay, so now how do we figure out what our head pressure should be? So it should be ambient, and then we add whatever our engineered condenser split was. So in this case, it's either a 15 or a 30. This one had one of those newer ECM fans. So they're gonna use a 15 Fahrenheit condenser split, okay? So I had a 65 Fahrenheit uh, ambient. If we add 15 Fahrenheit to that, that gives us 80 Fahrenheit, okay? We only had 78. Now, anytime we're below 70 Fahrenheit, I find that maybe you won't get the right exact pressures. Um, obviously, we don't have a headmaster control on this or a fan cycle. So the units are not really meant to operate below 70 Fahrenheit. They can, but the pressures may be off slightly. We're off by 2 Fahrenheit here, so I'm not really concerned. 80 Fahrenheit is going to equal 175 PSI. So let's jump over to our refrigeration cycle chart here. So we're looking for 16 PSI. And that's what we have. And on our high side, we're looking for 175 PSI. And we're getting 170 PSI, but like I mentioned earlier, our box temp is right at 65, or sorry, our ambient temp's 65 Fahrenheit. So once we're below 70, I find sometimes you might be slightly out of the range, but everything looks good here on this chart. And let's complete our stress test. We're at 2 Fahrenheit. Um, we were at 18, so we came down 16 Fahrenheit in 20 minutes. All good.